Riding the newest trail at Wildwood on the newest carbon fiber mountain bike that I have, that is a double dose of good. And when that carbon fiber mountain bike comes out of the box completely capable of riding these trails, triple good. The bike I'm talking about is the Mod 29 from Hyper. The Mod 29 XC, XC stands for cross country. A bike that does, in fact, have a true carbon fiber frame and a slew of other components. Boost up front, boost at the rear, and a pleasant drivetrain. I covered all this in my review. I'll put a link down in the description. If you haven't seen that, stop what you're doing right now, go watch that, and then come back. Because this video, it's about the new discoveries that I've made, some upgrades that I've put on the bike, and also a recap of at least one thing that I didn't mention in the previous video, this little fender. That came with the bike and it bolts right to the Sun Tour fork. Let's get started. Again, I'm assuming you already know about all of these components and how unique this is, a carbon fiber true mountain bike ready to roll out of the box, $1,700, $1,699.99 to be specific. Also a note, I saw lots of comments on my review saying Walmart bike. Nope, the Mod 29 is a direct to consumer model sold directly by Hyper themselves. Here it is on their site. In my opinion, this is a good bike, but the site information, well, it's, I guess, directly to the point, not a lot of fluff. Aside from sizing options, and I see currently there are only two sizes in stock, there's one paragraph and then this table of specs. And in that table is information for the first of the discoveries, some of this I referenced in the previous video, like the seat post, this snafu 30.9 by 300, at least, that's what it says on the site, but on the actual seat post and on the bike that I have, it's 31.6. Now they got the length about right at 300 millimeters, so which diameter is correct? Well, that would be 31.6 in part because I have physically touched it and laid my eyes on it, but also when I look at the technical drawings, they say 31.6 millimeters for the diameter of the seat tube. The conclusion, incorrect information on the Hyper website. But if there is to be an error, I guess an error where the customer gets something even better, that's good. There's also information here that leads to my other discovery, the Ford, they list it as this model. Note that it doesn't give the actual travel for the fork, and in my review I stated 100 millimeters, and I promise you that somewhere along the way that was either read off of something or picked up in a conversation because 100 was in my head. Then I decided this fork will have spacers so I can get it to 120 millimeters, maybe even more. And that caused me to actually look at the fork rather than through a viewfinder. And a side note, I was rushing the footage due to weather, so that's my excuse and why I didn't notice this, because when I looked at the stanchions, at least with my own eyes, I thought, you know, that's more than 100 millimeters. That's because it's 120 out of the box, but there is some information here that backs up that maybe 100 was mentioned somewhere. Back to the technical drawing, where we can see that the bike's head tube angle is listed at 69 degrees. And when I measured the head tube angle myself, it's actually 68. How does that give credence to my 100 millimeter theory? Well, if you take a bike with a 69 degree head tube angle and add 20 millimeters to the forks travel, voila, around 68 degrees. So 120 millimeters, not 100, and 68 degrees head tube angle instead of 69. For many people, that's gonna make this even more compelling out of the box. So it needs absolutely nothing, right? Well, there is one exception, and that gets me to the first of my two upgrades. Pedals. The factory pedals, they're just placeholders. I give them credit for trying to make something plastic, at least have some sort of mountain bike pegs, but these are slippery to say the least. They have to go, and this one single change made the ride lots better. Confidence means you can go faster, ride harder, and these pedals get that done. Yes, Fooker, some people frown upon this. Race face Chester knockoffs, I get it, they're definitely very similar, and their budget price makes them among the best bang per buck pedals on the market. When added to this bike, they complete it in its otherwise factory form. I could take this with only these pedals being changed and be 100% happy with the bike and 100% capable of riding it on trails with no other changes. Well, let me revise that. Instead of 100, let me say 99.9% .9 happy. To get the perfect balance of 100, 100, I need to change one more thing. And for that, I need to utilize the open port on the frame. You can see here there's already a cable running through it, 
That's because I completed the bike with a dropper post because out of the box it's BYOD, bring your own dropper. The dropper post I went with, a KS suspension or kind shock E10i model. And this is where my budget nature comes in because I want it to be as budget friendly as possible. As I've established, this bike has a 31.6 diameter seat tube and I had two dropper posts on hand, neither of which was 31.6, they were 27.2. But not to worry, I cheated. I used a shim to convert this 27.2 post to 31.6. And because this is a carbon frame, I went with the long shim, 100 millimeters. That'll give it enough bite to secure it in the carbon frame without having to exceed the torque specs for either the dropper or the carbon. For those of you that don't know what a dropper is, they do this. It is super cool. They are quickly addictive. Expand your abilities on the trail. Make for super easy mounts and dismounts. And this E10i model is super smooth. Now this isn't a high end and it's not a low end. It kind of falls in the enthusiast level. Pros, it works. It's lightweight for the price. The price is low and of course the dropper awesomeness. There are a couple of maybe negatives. Number one, it's a bit clunky sound wise. I also had to do a little finagling. I had to push it down into the seat tube and then a slight twist and correct. You'll also notice I had to back out this bottle cage screw. I can run it in. I think if I put a bottle cage there, it'll fit just about perfect. There is one other thing. It's not really a negative. It's just a reality of me being cheap. I prefer thumb remotes that sit under the bar. Never cared for the kind like this where you have to reach up. I also don't like the cable noodle going over the brakes, but I've left it here just to give it a chance and you'll see I've also left the cabling about four to five inches too long in case I decide to make some changes. A minor nitpick for a feature that I feel completes the bike and makes it, along with the pedals, total greatness for well under $1,900 total. Let me just say that this 29er, yes a 29er, is my grab and go bike for hitting the trails recently, especially on the new trail where I've made multiple passes on this bike and I'm still trying to learn the nuances including exactly where the taped off sections are. They can kind of sneak up on you. I almost destroyed these thinking they were further away, but hey, they're proof the bike's brakes work like a champ. A little wasted effort here. I spent time making sure I put this tape back exactly to the tension it was, only to find out that about three or four hours later, they officially opened the trail and took it right back down. To recap where we are thus far, I've made a couple of discoveries that are very positive. I've added two mods to this bike, one necessary and one that complements the possibilities of the bike. And like dropper posts or not, it puts that open port on the top tube of the frame to use. Now I've mentioned a couple of nitpick negatives. Are there any actual true negatives thus far in my experience with this bike, even including the upgrades? Yeah, there are probably a couple. Number one, I think of carbon, I think light. I like my carbon bikes to be light. This one was 28.2 pounds out of the box. With the addition of new pedals and the dropper post, it's exactly one pound heavier, 29.2. All right, that's still a nitpick, but this is an actual issue. The quick release lever on this boost through axle, the factory one that you're seeing here, on my third trail ride, my trail senses started tingling. I got off to check the bike and I found just a slight bit of play on the rear wheel. Then I discovered that the quick release lever was floppy and and it just came off. As in came apart, barrel nut, thread stripped, the whole works. A factory installed part that I never messed with. The wheel was already on tight, I just aired up the tires and went. So that means I had to contact Hyper Support. They didn't have the product in stock and I'm still waiting to hear from them, but I'm impatient. So I shopped on Amazon and I found this. We've heard of Rock Bros, well now there's Magic Bros. I'll keep you updated on what happens or doesn't happen as far as a replacement part from Hyper. Really the only true negative that I've had thus far on a bike that otherwise has only been getting better. You know, I don't even call it the Mod 29 anymore. I call it the Mod Rod. I like it and I suspect many of you do too. Comment below with your thoughts on my modifications here. What you think about the Mod Rod. Thank you for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.